What's going on guys? I hope you all are having a fantastic day and today we are going to be doing a battle of the budget CPUs. So today we're going to be testing an FX 6300 and an Intel Core i3. Both of them go for about the same price even though the FX 6300 is a little bit cheaper. But today we are going to be running some benchmarks to compare the two and determine which one is the better value. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bad boys out. I'm going to go ahead and get the motherboards out and we're going to go ahead and assemble them real quick. So we are running the Cinebench test right now for the i3-8100. It is currently in the rig right now, and the FX6300 is just chilling on my bed, even though I already tested it. So the FX6300 compared to the i3 really didn't do that great. It wasn't really that bad either. The FX6300 got a Cinebench score of 385, and the i3, I've ran the test a couple times already. The first test on the bottom is the one I ran like last week or something. And the CPU test up here that got a score of 575 is the one I just ran, but I messed up the last take. So that's the CPU score that I'm going to go ahead and guess is what the i3 is going to get overall. So as you can see here, a disparity between essentially 575 to 385 is pretty significant. And the i3-8100 is actually able to hold its own against some Intel i7s. Now granted, some of these i7s aren't exactly the newest and most high-end things ever, but these things have eight threads and the i3 with its four cores and four threads is able to keep up with these CPUs. And the FX6300 is really lagging behind in a lot of these senses. It's pretty much on par with some mobile CPUs that Intel has produced. And I wanna say it's about on par with the i5-650, which is a two core, four thread CPU, which isn't that great. So there is a huge disparity between these two CPUs, which to me, is kind of telling and also a little bit impressive on the part of the i3 because like I said the i3 is able to hold its own against the i7s. The i3 is really incredible for its price. It's got really high single threader performance and even though Cinebench is a synthetic test, let's go ahead and move on to the gaming results and I guarantee you that there will be more results in favor of the i3. So now that the benchmarks are over, it's time for some final conclusions and final thoughts on the processors. So the benchmarks pretty much tell the story between the i3-8100 and the FX6300. The 6300 is still a pretty good CPU for gaming, but the i3 is able to essentially kick its butt in pretty menial tasks. So all in all, the i3-8100 is an excellent CPU for the price. For around 120 to 115 bucks, this CPU is excellent because it actually shares a lot of the same specs as a mid to high-end i5 from 
Intel's last generation CPUs. Granted, it's a locked CPU, but right now I have it running with an AIO and it runs really cool and it also runs extremely well. And I have to say that the i3-8100 is probably my new favorite budget CPU when before it was actually the FX6300. But the i3-8100 is also excellent for a little bit of content creation on the side like what I like to do. Usually what I do is I use my computer primarily for gaming and then I'll edit a few videos here and there. And I find that the i3-8100 is also excellent for that. And it actually renders videos in the format that I use, which is 1080p 60fps, quite a bit faster than the FX6300. Now it's not like minutes faster, but it usually is about 45 to 30 seconds faster. Now for a lot of people that's probably not worth the upgrade, but for me personally it was worth the upgrade, especially because you're upgrading to a more modern platform. The FX6300 still uses DDR3, and at this point this platform is nearly five and a half years old, and it's starting to get up there in age because companies usually at this point would come out with a replacement, which for AMD it's Ryzen, but Ryzen uses DDR4 memory and also so does the i3-8100, so mostly what you're getting with upgrading to the i3-8100 over the FX6300 is you're getting more modern features on your motherboard and you're also getting access to DDR4 RAM, which for some people isn't that great because DDR4 RAM to be honest is pretty expensive, but if you pair it with the RAM that I made in a review from a week and a half ago, it actually is an excellent CPU and that's what I'm using it for right now and that's what I'm using with it, and I have to say the i3-8100 is perfect if you want to game on a budget. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to click here for more videos, and if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe if you're new around here. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.